what's happening what is happening y'all what is going on welcome 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 to another great episode of the errington gavin yes yeah it's another great day another great day you are tuned in and join i'm i'm thinking i'm on radio y'all i just had a, a did a, a record on my radio show uh today so i'm like over here saying you are now tuned in well look welcome again welcome welcome all uh to the aaron to gavin podcast again uh this is the show where i get to sit down have just a one-on-one conversation with you the listener the viewers uh you know i bring on some uh talked about you know trendy topic stories and i share my unfiltered uh opinion on that and it is it's just a it's just a conversation like if we're having at lunch dinner breakfast kickbacks at your at the crib at the cookout it, it is those conversations right and um again i truly appreciate you tuning in and those who have supported since the first episode uh i truly thank you again i'm i'm making it my best to continue to bring out great content for you and uh, a great conversation, great stories, as well as guests. Because recently, I've I've been having a lot of uh, guests. It is election season, so I've had my friends that work in the field of politics, whether they're candidates, official, current officials, uh, behind the scenes uh, people. I have I've been having them on, and I hope to bring on more guests in all different avenues, whether it's entertainment, sports, uh, counseling, uh, finance is very important, and business. I want to I want to bring everybody. It, and every single expert here on the Aaron Gavin podcast. So um, coming to you with new episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time via podcast. So wherever you get your podcast, whether that's Stitcher, uh, Apple, Spotify, iHeart, Odyssey. We're in so many markets, man. We're continuing to grow the platform as well as the the black owned uh, uh, the black owned streaming uh, platform, Haiti. Haiti with a Y, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it is an awesome. A, they it's an, a platform that has all black owned content creators on there. So we're excited to that our smooth club uh me, you know, media is up there. So you can tune into uh my weekly radio show, the podcast version of that, as well as the Aaron to Gavin podcast. So again, we're continue to grow the platform. Also, you can tune into this show visually 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday through Fridays, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time via YouTube facebook and uh uh, twitter so we want to continue to bring on some great content for you all and i'm I'm checking out all the other you know streaming service platforms where i want to you know branch off and you know make sure it hits all audience because hey look i welcome everybody and i want everybody to tune into the show um i have fun doing it and i hope that you enjoy the conversation i hope that you you know you you are a part of you feel a part of it because this is this is a conversation between me and you so again i truly thank you uh again this also this show is presented by rugged evolution beard care rugged is the new smooth it's an all natural men's grooming line with the amazing bombs oils uh beard oils beard bombs condition shampoos i'm telling you see my beard right now i'm a, a not just a, you know i'm a client i'm i endorse it i'm not just the the founder and creator of it but look i am a client and it's awesome so be sure to check that out ruggedevo.com it's an awesome awesome brand so let's get it going with some of the convos what i have lined up for you guys today so on today's show for one i want to bring up i was looking on social media my wife had showed me this and i was like what in the world it's been going viral so there was a post that had a list of places that you do not take a, a lady out on the first date right they rank the they rank the um the bad first date spots and it's ranked by women it goes viral and i might actually read you the list because it's like some i okay i get your point but it's like the on the other side i'm like where the hell do we take you guys at so i'm gonna go from uh last place to the top so it's 28 of them that was named so 28 is sporting events, sporting events. Number 27 is Waffle House. 26 is Bar for Just Drinks. 25 is the Hookah Bar. 24 is the Nightclub. 23 is Bowling Alley. 
Uh, 23 is bowling. 22 is, let's see, what is 22? Okay, somewhere that requires a long drive. 21 is movie night, Netflix, Hulu, etc. 20 is a family function. 19 is ice cream dates. 18 is coffee dates. 27 is Starbucks. Ain't that pretty much the same thing? Anyway, uh, 16 is church. 15 is the gym. 14 is Denny's. 13 is IHOP. 12 is a buffet. Number 11 is Red Lobster. Number 10 is Wingstop. Number 9 is Buffalo Wild Wings. Number 8 is any fast food chain. Number 7 is Your House. 6 is The Movies. Number 5 is Olive Garden. Number 4 is Chipotle. Number 3 is Chili's. Number 2 is Applebee's. And number 1, drum roll please, the Cheesecake Factory. The Cheesecake Factory. So this went viral because as a man who I've taken my wife, you know, on our on our first date at a very nice restaurant. Now I was even in even in my dating kind of like years or when I was, you know, trying to, you know, date out thinking it was cool. It's like, okay, dinner and a movie. That was really a dinner first. So I have the conversation. Let's talk. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Let's get to know each other. And then the movies. And my reason behind that was because, okay, we go see a slight scary movie. You go ahead, you know, creep on to me. Because, see, I love scary movies. Majority of the time, ladies don't like scary movies, right? And I'm, and the girls I was into, well, the girls that I was seeing, not into, but the girls I was seeing at the time, they, you know, majority of them were, like, never into scary movies. Just like my my, my wife now. My wife who we dated in college. And um, she, you know, I'm like, okay, that's that's was my reason behind, okay, a movie and uh, or dinner and a movie now when i look at this list there's pl- there's spots i can agree on and there's spots i disagree on first and foremost your first date you always want to get to know the person right you don't want to take all you know go all ham and all out you don't want to because again if you not into this person then it's like wow i wasted money i wasted a great you know but you know night it's like wow i put a lot of effort into it you know you want to you know you don't want to go too far and beyond uh Coffee dates is great. Ice cream dates, cute. Bowling alley, come on. Who doesn't like to go bowling on that first day? You get to still talk, have activity. That's a great first date. Nightclubs, okay, I can see that being a distraction. Hookah bar, you know, likewise, a bar for just drinks. Uh, I'm back and forth with that because if you if you don't mind coffee, if I if I I don't want to be biased. If it's if coffee's a great one, Starbucks. And then a bar for drinks. You you get to communicate and socialize a lot at the bar for drinks. So I don't, I don't care for that. Sporting events. I can't I can't see how you can get to know somebody at sporting event. You can you can in a sense because we actually had this conversation on my radio show. You can have you can get to know a person at a sporting event because if they don't like it, then boom, you know that they don't they're not into sports. If they do, you're like awesome. This girl loves sports. But I'm all about okay. What kind of sporting event, right? Now, basketball, Dane, you can you can have a conversation, you know, back to back, but eh, there's always after. I feel as though like there there always have to be like, okay, you're gonna do this, but also to end the night, we'll do this. So like, boom, the main attraction is a basketball game. But before or after, let's grab a bite to eat. Let's really sit down and have a one on one conversation because when it comes to crowded events, I don't feel as though that should be a first date. All right. Let me know what y'all think about that. Put, you know, DM me. Arrington Gavin is my social media. Uh, you can leave a comment on, you know, um, in Facebook and, you know, like all that good stuff. I, I, I want to know. I want to know what's your thoughts on this. So I bring that up because recently I like have something in my throat. Excuse me. Recently. The ladies clap back with a list of men who shouldn't be dating, period. Once again, I feel like this is just a bashing marathon uh, against men from the ladies. And I feel like it's just that I feel like it's one person because I'm like, is this a really a group of ladies that puts this list together or like who thinks about these surveys? So, OK, I'm looking on social media and it gives you a list, a list of men who shouldn't be dating. And I'll just go from number one. They give you 29 lists. OK, so I'll give you I'll give you one through 29. I'm going to do this real fast as much as I can. OK, number one, men with toddlers or Young, uh, younger children, men that live with their mama, men that live with their baby mama, 
DL Men is number four. I, I'm not. I, y'all, I, y'all gotta help me with that one. Um, number five is men that don't have a valid driver's license. Number six is men that bank with Cash App. <laughs> <laughs> that bank with cash app uh number seven is men that sag their pants understandable uh number eight is men that don't take care of their kids understandable again men that disrespect women number nine okay so why is it mm. uh number 10 is men that don't own a suit that's a bit aggressive because i mean it's is is be- i have multiple and i recommend men always have at least one tuxedo one good suit that's just my my tip right there. Uh, number eleven is men that live in motels. Okay. Um, Twelve is men that want to hold a couple of dollars till they get paid. <laughs> Thir- Thirteen men who clothe who clothes are in tubs. Number fourteen is men that can't log into anything without help. Again. Being a little aggressive, men that gotta tell they mama everything again, being aggressive. Uh, men that work in the FedEx hub, men that work for a temporary service, truck drivers, the them grand rising men, them uh, what WYD men, uh, men with multiple kids and baby mamas, men that bash women on social media, men that. Okay, I, I feel like men. We we need to start making a list of ourselves. I'm just I'm already getting pissed reading some of these men that don't keep their locks up. Men that hairline gone gone, but keep but they keep holding on. Men that always talk about what they used to used to have. Uh, married men, men without transportation, and then men that are Cowboys fans. This is just a this is just a clown show of a. Uh, of a list this is, it really is just a clown show of a list but uh give me your thoughts on what y'all think about that because this is currently trending right now on social media and i i don't keep in touch too much with some of the new trends like again my co-host told me this i remember my wife showing me the list uh before and uh we had the uh, conversation on our radio show about it but um this list is a, a bit bogus uh Hey, there's people out there that believe in this, that actually participate. Again, as for the men, I mean, as for us, what other spot is there good to go? Because I I feel as though ladies are asking for a lot, especially when it comes to first date. And that's that, and that's my that's the issue right there. You ask for so much, and what do men get in return? Again, more bashing, more bashing, more bashing. That's just me. I'm speaking for the men. But am I wrong, men? At, you know, at, let me know if I'm wrong. Do men get bashed a hell of a lot? for and it's just like okay what do we do because we we do try to it's so it makes it so hard for us to try and do good when we continue to get bashed right we always get bashed and it sucks okay i'm gonna move on i'm gonna move on to another conversation another uh trending story hall of fame nfl hall of famer current sports analyst and commentator michael irvin uh was on undisputed recently and he had was he was they were talking about john ja morant uh, of the Memphis Grizzlies, right? And John Moran had been uh in, you know, getting himself in some trouble doing stupid stuff, you know, flashing guns on social media uh m- multiple times, and it was sad because that wasn't that was not how the gentleman was raised, John Moran. He was not raised like that. He had great parents that, you know, taught him well, taught him sense. He was not raised like that, but everybody wants to be this hardcore, you know, boom, I'm from the streets, I'm tough, I'm this, I'm that. They always love to play this character and persona, right? And so Michael Irvin brought that up during the um, during Undisputed and he used an example. And I feel like he was a little harsh by the example that he used, but he used his own son, his own son, uh, which I believe is uh, either one of his sons. because I know one of them also plays college football or is either out of college football. I'm, I'm not sure, but he brought his son up and said his son's a rapper. He raps. He goes by the name of uh, Tut Tarantino. Now, OK, boom. Could let, could, you know. You 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 acknowledge your son's a career name on TV, national TV, good publicity, good recognition. But he takes a farther turn. He says that he raps about. I listen to his songs. I listen to his lyrics, and I'm like, bro, come on, this is this ain't you. You grew up in a gated community. 
You ain't from the streets like that. What what is this? So he, in a sense, he ruined his so-called, you know, street cred uh, uh, brand by saying, this is not you. You you do not live this life. And I think the issue is now, guys, youth, young people, a lot of their idols are people in music or in sports. Um, You look at a lot of figures in, in, in music. I'll just say hip hop, for example. Um, there's a lot of guys that will get themselves in trouble uh, because they have to continue to maintain that hard life character. Now, um, a friend of mine and co-host, uh, uh, Sirac Fox, had had said that, um, which he made a great point. He said, when guys make it to a certain status in their career, they lean away from that hardcore lifestyle because they really lived it. So they're, they're trying to get away from it as possible. I feel as though the youngins now that hit success, they want to continue to live that hard life. I mean, come on. How many times have you heard of a story? I mean, how many uh, 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 well-known young rappers lost their lives? You know, like how how many t- how many times do we have to continue to hear about oh such and such was shot, or either at an event at a uh, uh, at just at random outside of his home. You know, it's just there's always issues happening where you know the young ones that are very successful and can do great things they they lose their lives because they try to live this lifestyle that is not them. It's not. I'm gonna tell you this right. It's not y- y- y'all not about that life. I hell, I'm not about that life, but I sure as hell don't want to see you guys continue to fake a, a character when people look up to you and they, I mean, be your authentic self, man. Be your authentic self. Be your true self. Lead by example with things. Try not to live that, you know, that street life. Like, come on, man. I mean, a lot of the greats, you you know, LL Cool J, Big Daddy Kane, uh, Ice Cube, uh, 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 Ice T, right? They, they don't want to live that life no more. Lil Wayne, you don't want to live that life no more. None of these guys are saying, "Okay, look, I'm good. I, I, I'm gonna be successful so I can lead the streets, and I'm gonna take the streets with me." Who the hell does stuff like that? No, you, you, you want to get successful so you can lead, so you can move your family from those hard conditions, from that lifestyle, and become somebody bigger and better. Okay, Jay Z, bigger and better. Dr. Dre, bigger and better. I, you know, I'm I'm trying to think of some more men in hip hop. Uh, ja Rule, bigger, bigger and better. Like they don't want to live Fat Joe, bigger and better. They all want to leave that life. So, again, it was uh, uh, you know, I was happy that Michael Irvin meant, you know, said that, but I do think that he was a little too. It was it he it, 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 I wish he wouldn't say that out in the public, you know, about his child, or at least kind of like expose him like that. Because again, hey, look. Your kid probably really has a passion for music, and now it's like, okay, he has to rebrand, or you just hurt his numbers in uh, in sales or hurt his credibility. So, a little harsh, a little harsh. Just me, y'all. Just me. Uh, kind of saying in the realm of hip hop. So, there's a a, a a popular personality rapper uh, by the name of Blueface, right? Blueface. I've never heard any of his music, but I've seen him a lot in social media for the wrong reasons. Uh, getting in trouble. Him and his uh, uh, the mother of his child, Krishan Rock, I believe. They're always seen fighting in the public. They have a re- they had a reality show. They were this, they were that. It's it's sad stuff, y'all. It's just extremely sad stuff. But anyway, he was at a LA Rams game uh, recently uh, when they played the they were playing the Steelers, and he was in a VIP section, very nice seats at the you know Ram Stadium in Los Angeles, uh, and People, everybody can see the VIP seating. It's not like box seats. It was kind of like ground level VIP seating when you're like right there on the field. This man is with uh, his now new fiance. I don't know her name, but he has a new fiance now. Um, And they had three ladies who start to take their clothes off. I'm talking drop their pants, show their thong, start twerking. And they then uh, 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 Blueface and his uh, now fiance, they were throwing money on them, throwing money so the world can see it. Bruh, once again, people are watching you, man. Young people think that's okay for what you did. Young people think that's cool how to treat uh, our queens out there. They think that's cool. It's sickening. It's extremely sickening. Grow the fuck up. Okay? Grow up. I, and I, and I, 
you you know I you might have some personal things going on in your life where you need some help. I I you know I hope that and pray that you get help. But this is this is just it gets so annoying because I was telling my friends, see, controversy controversy pays. Ignorance makes millions and billions. All the ignorance and all the successful people, not all, but some that are getting more sense. It's like ignorance pays for pe there are people out there that are really trying to do good in their communities, good out there in the world. They are still struggling or they're not getting the rightful uh, uh, recognition as they should. Because ignorance is stepping over that ignorance is the one that's making the money, making the hits, all that jazz. It's old. It's tiring. I get sick of it. Uh, uh, it's, it's more uh, annoying when, there, you know, people from your community that are acting like this. Uh, is I, I hate it. I hate it. That's all I, that's all I can say about that. I just had to acknowledge that because I'm pretty sure the rapper is, uh, is receiving a ban from the arena because obviously sporting events is family events. Majority of them, like football, they bring their kids to those uh, uh, games. Matter of fact, Matthew Stafford's wife had acknowledged her frustration with that because she brings her kids to the games. I mean, the, the L.A. Rams uh, starting quarterback, Matthew Stafford. Like, I mean, who – they they should have – I'm pretty sure they did. I didn't watch the full on – the full clip. I mean, they kind of show, of course, the, the prime thing that they wanted to expose, but they should have escorted him out. If they didn't shame on the LA Rams uh, organization, uh, but you should you should have kicked them out right then and there, right when one of them dropped his pen, out, get out, gotta go, gotta go. We're not having it here. I don't know if you recall when uh remember when uh, uh Lizzo when Lizzo showed her outfit at a Lakers game. No, she got banned for life from the Lakers team. I mean, what makes you think stuff like that is okay, people? What makes you think it's okay to flash your ass around? What makes you think you can strip and show excessive amounts of skin when you see kids in something? It's just, it's messed up. It's messed up. <sighs> mm. I got to take a sip on that one. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, what do I have next? Um, okay, let's move it on to politics. Uh, so, breaking news. Former Vice President Mike Pence is dropping out of the presidential uh, race. He obviously hasn't grown in the polls and he sees that his campaign is not succeeding. It's um, it's decreasing. And. And um, it is uh, it's just extremely sad. It's extremely sad. Uh, uh it's oh, I'm sorry. It's not extreme. <laughs> I'm I'm getting sidetracked because my wife was texting me. Um, as far as Mike Pence not continuing his presidential race, we all saw it. We all saw. It. We all see the poll numbers dropping. Um, we all see nothing is building up in his race. He's very plain. You know soft-spoken oh america this and that god bless you and god bless. it's old it's you know i call him as well as a candidate uh tim scott hallmark <laughs> like they're just they're so like oh you know god bless you and god bless america this is not the america i know and it's, eh, it, gets, it gets old it gets tiring like please like get with the issues not you know just get with the issues don't talk about policy don't talk about this is what you remember growing up in when you first came here. This is America growing up as a kid. Dude, you're like almost 70. Like, it's been a while since you've been a kid. So a lot has changed. A lot has changed. And uh, I think, the you know, it's narrowing down on the Republican side. I believe, I know Larry Elder. Woo! You know, everybody knows Larry. Larry had dropped his race and uh, publicly endorsed Donald Trump. No shocker at all. Because, see, here's the thing. When you got you have a lot of candidates when they run for office, a lot of them know they're not going to win the presidential race. They they start to, and correct me if I'm wrong to all my political friends that are tuning into this show, what they do is they run so that hopefully whoever is becomes president can offer them a job on, on their cabinet. That's what they want. They just want to, they just want a position in the White House. They want that clearance. They want to have that power too. So a lot of those cats knew it was no chance in hell that they were going to win. Uh, Pence, I don't think Pence would accept a position from Donald Trump. I doubt Donald Trump will offer him one. Uh, Larry Elder, he's been a kiss, you know, 
he kisses up to a, a former president Trump, so he might be offered one. Uh, he might put him director of hood. I don't know, or urban development. Some something related to African American people. It will he will say, oh, Larry, let me put you at. Yeah, you mark my words. Uh, so as of right now, you know we're getting ready for the third debate. The third debate should be occurring pretty soon, and it's happening in Miami. Uh, let's see when that third debate is. Okay, the third debate should be will be happening uh November eighth, November eighth, right after election day, November seventh. So hey guys, if y'all haven't voted, early voting is happening right now. Uh, but uh, if you you know if you haven't voted, if you like to just vote like on that day, hey November seventh is that day. Actually, I'm gonna be having a um. Uh, my first ever, I'm going to be uh, going live with my friend, Mr. Conrad Schventer, who was a guest on the show. He's the host of Shez Who and on YouTube. And um, we will be having a, like an election night theme uh, show. We're going to have some friends that work in, um, work in politics and, you know, getting their thoughts. We're going to make it nice. We're going to enjoy ourselves. We're going to have great commentary. And I um, hope that you can tune into that. We haven't uh, spoken on um a time we're going to do it and stuff like that, but I'll be making a post soon. Uh, so hopefully just stay, stay tuned and stay afloat to the pot, to our um, social medias. We're going to make that happen. Um, but as of right now, there's only four Republican candidates that have qualified for the third debate. That is, uh, let's see who it is. Um, okay. We got um, Florida governor, Ron DeSantis, former UN ambassador, Nikki Haley, who's also been the former, uh, I believe governor of South Carolina, uh, businessman, Vivek Ramasamy. And former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie have all qualified for the third debate, um, which is pretty good for Chris Christie. I'm still surprised he's still still in it. But um, right now on the Republican side, if if I had to if I had to, you know, root for a Republican, the Republic on the Republican side, I would say Nikki Haley is someone who has really been, you know, catching my eye and attention uh, just because of building up. She started really last and then she just worked her way up. She's the only female in the um, the Republican uh, race. Uh, but it will be interesting. It will be interesting uh, to see. Of course, Donald Trump will not be participating in this, in this uh, uh, debate. He hasn't participated in any of the last two. Um, so it would be interesting to see. Oh, about to sneeze. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, man. Whew. I, heard, I You know, I, I saved your guys' ears right there. Um but yes, this debate is happening in Miami. It's actually going to be uh, aired on NBC. And the another interesting, uh, you know, fun fact about this debate: uh, moderators will be Lesser Holt and Christian Walker. Uh, Christian Walker is a new host of Meet the Press. Lester Holt, of course, hosts, uh, I think, NBC Nightly, Nightly News. And another moderator that will be participating with that is, uh, give me a second. Um, do do do. Hugh Hewitt, Hugh Hewitt, conservative, uh, uh, radio host and uh, uh, morning talk show host Hugh Hewitt, uh, will be the moderators. I believe NBC. I heard, I read that M NBC was partnering with uh, Salem News Network as well as Rumble with this. So, again, we're they're making sure to have it in multiple different uh, uh networks because i think the last two was it was fox news and then fox business and now heading the nbc so uh we we shall see because it's cutting it close there has been a new um a newcomer on the democratic side let me go ahead and uh do 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 Give me one second. Give me one second. Uh, Dean, Rep uh, Congressman Dean Phillips. Uh, he is out of, let's see, let's see, Minnesota. He's a three-term Minnesota congressman, and he will challenge President Joe Biden for the Democratic nomination. So now that leaves a back to three because initially it was, of course, former President Joe Biden wanted to run for re-election. You had um I forgot I still had my my computer charger <laughs> right there. Um you have Joe Biden running for re-election. You have Marianne Williamson, who um has run before. She's a very, you know, strong progressive. I believe she's in 
author, entrepreneur, businesswoman. Um, also, at the time, RFK, Robert um, F. Kennedy Jr., was a representative on the Democratic ticket um, as a candidate. But he realized that uh, not a lot of Democrats support uh, RFK. So I believe he took the smart route to run third party in the independent party. So um, he is uh, he has moved his campaign to the as the independent candidate. So that makes two independent candidates. You have Cornell West, professor, extraordinaire, civil rights activist, smart as hell, dude. Um, he is uh, he moved from multiple parties. He started with the People's Party, then Green Party, now um, Independent Party. So, yeah, two independent candidates. Right now you have at least four. I believe Tim Scott is still. He has not ended his campaign um, there's only been three people that I know on the Republican side. That's former my, former VP Mike Pence, Larry Elder, and Will Hurd out of Texas. I think he's a former congressman out of uh, out of Texas. Um, Democratic side, you have a new guy, Dean Phillips. Uh, Dean Phillips uh, is at uh, 54, great age, uh, to run. I believe he might be the second youngest. No. No, he might be third or fourth youngest candidate in the full election uh, that's running. Uh, you know, he's he has not spoken anything bad about him. This is actually his words right here, if I can. OK, so I think President Biden has done a spectacular job for our country, but it's not about the past. This is an election about the future. I will not sit still. I will not be quiet in the face of numbers that are so clearly saying that we're going to be facing an emergency next November. That's what Phillips said as he announced his run on CBS News on Friday morning. So it's getting juicy, y'all. It's getting juicy with this election. So um, be, uh, I, I think it will be interesting to to check out. Um, and uh, you should you should continue to stay tuned, read up on these candidates because again, it's the, it's still very early. The closer it gets to it. More and more candidates will be popping up out of the uh, out of the woodwork, and so uh, yes, we shall see. We shall see. Uh, let me do a quick commercial break, y'all, and then I'll be back to close up the show. Become a man of distinction with Rugged Evolution Beard Care. Order our scented beard oils and beard balms to help you maintain and grow the perfect beard. Order today. Try our men's care products like the Full Body Exfoliating Cleansing Bars, Body Wash, Smooth Stash, and more. Log on to our website or download our app to place your orders. Rugged Evolution Beard Care. We're your luxury but affordable men's care line. And remember, Rugged is the new smooth. That's right, baby. Rugged is the new smooth. Once again, I hope y'all enjoyed another great conversation here on the Aaron to Gavin podcast. Be sure to tune in every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You see it down at the screen, uh, uh, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time via podcast, wherever you get your podcast uh, from. Also, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time via YouTube, YouTube, Facebook, uh, X, formerly known as Twitter. And just just tune in, man. Tune in, support. Uh, subscribe to the channel, R Smooth Club Media. R Smooth Club Media on YouTube. Subscribe, subscribe, su subscribe, comment, like. I truly appreciate it, y'all. Um, we're gonna keep on building up this show. Gonna be seeing some, um, some you know, new graphics coming soon. New, you know, new setups, all that great stuff. Again, I hope you all enjoying this. I hope you enjoying this conversation. Let me know what you think, please. Let me know what you think of the show. Um, I, 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 tr I truly appreciate. Uh, you know, if if you give me some harsh criticism or if you just give me some good praise, I, I appreciate either one. Um, but continue to tune into the pod. Also, tune into my radio show, weekly radio show, every Sundays in your city, every Sundays uh, at 12 p.m. on WNSB Hot 91.1 FM, the soul of VA. Don't worry if you're not in the Hampton Roads area and you cannot find that radio dial to 91.1 FM. No worries. You can tune in live. Uh, two ways. One way is listen online at WNSB.org or by downloading the free app, WNSB app. It is free. So once again, y'all, tune into that. All the platforms. Check out Rugged Evolution Beer Care, uh, RuggedEvo.com for more information. And um, I will see y'all next time. Peace and blessings. Y'all stay safe out there. See you next time.